Hi everybody, so we're looking at this Elegoo Neptune 3D Filament Printer Max and it is quite a beast of a machine but they're all pretty much the same certainly in their design ethos and certainly in the way they actually operate and the things that you have to do with them and they're fairly universal across this type of machine as well. Now, um, they are stunningly easy to use, they're pretty much plug and play actually the software which we'll look at later is just a Cura software, it's a, an Elegoo port of Cura and again it's drop it in there, resize it, do whatever you like to it and set print and off it'll print so they've made it stunningly easy and there's some really nice attributes about it one of the things I really like is this, it's the print bed, it's got a rough side and a smooth side and the prints stick to it beautifully or at least i found the prints to stick to it beautifully it does an awesome job and that's on top of the bed. And if we look at the bed itself, then the bed is held on by these bolts here, which have little sort of screws underneath. And that is actually how you level it. You level it by fiddling on with these screws. But let me unbolt the bed for you so you get a better look at that and hopefully a better understanding of it. So on this larger model, the bed plate itself has got some bracing bars there, which you've got four bolts holding them in. And then there's eight bolts that hold the bed down. These two central bolts fix the bed onto the carriage plate. The carriage plate is rigidly fixed to the motors because that's the one that you want to be nice and firm. And then on the three sets of outer bolts, so three here and three here, what they've got is a little turn wheel, a bolt that goes through it, and then a spring that goes through that. So there's three, these three parts there. They go through the carriage, so they go through here. There's a spring between the carriage plate and the printing bed plate. These have nothing on them. So when you have the bed on there and you tighten up all of these, you basically pull the bed in that direction. If you loosen those on this side and tighten on this side, you'll pull the bed in that direction. And then if you do these two tight, these two loose, you'll pull the bed in that direction. So fiddling on with these twists, underneath here, so the twist bolts go like, oh, sorry, like that. As you screw those down, you're pulling the bed down and twisting those is what levelling the bed is all about. If you tighten them all, what you'll in fact do is just bow the bed and you won't get it flat at all. So what you need to do is slacken them all off so that the bed is loose and of course being loose it will wobble here and as you perform the function of the test to test the bed is level it will go to one of these points and you put a piece of paper under that point give a little twiddle until the paper is just gripped and then that is set and you move on to the next point so we'll do that in a minute but I wanted to show you this that the bed rests on those two points there then they twist these knobs here either pull the bed in that direction, or pull the bed in that direction, or pull the bed in that direction, depending which ones you're tightening up. And obviously the spring then pushes against it so that you get it nice and tight. This bit incidentally is just the heating plate. The heating pad's underneath this reflective and there's the attachment for it there at the heating pad. So that's what the makeup of it actually is, how it operates. It just operates by swiveling on this central two points here the whole thing is then put on this firm carriage and that carriage is the bit that moves up and down taking the bed with it. The bed levelling is about twisting these knobs to make sure that it's not that way, that way, that way or bowed across the surface. So let's put the back on. I put the bed back on but only the central bolts and you can see what I mean. If I press that down or pull it up then that bed will tilt and that's exactly what we do by turning those knobs here that are underneath the carriage with the spring return bolt in. As we tighten that up then that will pull the bed in that direction. As we loosen it and tighten this one we get exactly the opposite. As we tighten up the front and loosen the back then it pulls in that direction. Okay it's nearly back together. There's actually quite a lot of really cute things I keep discovering about this. So on the turn wheels it's got arrows going up and down which I think is unbelievably cute 
Apart from the fact that they're under there so you can't read them. But that's brilliant. And there are other things I like about it. I noticed only recently, this mat has got a little drawer in it right here for you to keep the tools. The smaller machines don't have the space for the drawer, but the Max has this drawer. On the smaller machines, they actually include an STL file for you to print a little tool rack that can go onto the machine to keep those tools there. Here they've got the drawer. I like it because, you know, some designer has gone, oh, hey, there's space there to put a drawer. Let's put a drawer. That'll be useful. And that sort of thing shows the kind of thought that's going into this, you know, putting little direction arrows, putting little drawers for the tools. It, it's about thinking about the machine and how useful it's going to be to the user and that sort of stuff. It, well, I, I love it actually. It really says a lot to me about the thought that's gone in the design of this machine. I mean, actually, I love this thing as well. Create the future. <laughs> it's just brilliant, really. So those little extra thoughts that people are putting into this when they design mach the machine tells me an awful lot about the machine. Okay, let's put this last screw on. Oh, these come in two sizes. There's a small size and there's larger size. The larger size goes on the outer corners, the smaller in the middle, because of course it's got to pass the bar when this tray moves. So if you do do this and you take these off to have a look at it, put them in order because this size does matter. Anyway, let's put this one back on. Okay, so the levelling procedure, the manual levelling procedure you have to go through first is a bit sort of weirdly counterintuitive because what you have to do is tighten up these knobs to make the paper loose. And if you think about it, it makes sense because tightening the knob pulls the bed in that direction. And as it's being pulled in that direction, of course, the gap between the head and a piece of paper is going to get bigger and so the paper will get loose. And what you want is a little bit of pull friction. Now, when you turn the machine on, this is the screen that you'll get and you press level. Confirm it. And what it will do is auto put this to home and it'll find home and you have to wait for it to do that. Okay, so it's found its home position, and here we've got three choices, 0 0.0, 0 0.1 and 1 millimeter, and then an up arrow and a down arrow. And if we move our piece of paper easily, then we want to down it by 0.1 of a millimeter, say, and test your paper again. And you're looking for a slight friction. And there we go, you can feel the drag of the paper. Once you've done that, you press manual, confirm, and you'll get this selection here. This represents those knobs here, and I start at two, which is gonna be this knob here, and test the paper. If it's too tight, then you want to tighten the knob up, because that will pull it down. If it's too loose, then you want to slacken the knob because that spring will push the bed back up. So then we go five. And the same procedure. You see that's just a little bit tight, so we want to slacken that knob. There we go. Now what we've done is level the bed in that direction, but it still might be unlevel in that direction. So we go to one. That's a little tight. There we go. Three. You might have to play between one and three, because as it does that with it, it may make one slacker or one less. That's a bit slack. There it is. Then we could do four.
and then six. And that's good. Okay, we do the leveling like that, then it will do its auto leveling and it'll run through that procedure testing all of these points. Now it does this when it's heated the bed, but there it is just going through its test points. It moves to the point, tests them and marks it off on the screen. It does it when the bed's heated, obviously, to stop warping. And once it's done all of that, you get a confirmed screen and it's ready to rock and roll. Now, it won't pass the auto leveling check unless you do that manual bit. The manual bit's a little bit confusing because, as, like I say, you have to loosen it off, loosen the screw to tighten the bed, and that's a bit counterintuitive. But if you approach it in a logical way, and remember the bed tilts that way and that way, that way, that way, so you do the centres and then go to the corners, do opposite corners, then you're going to do that manual in just like a few minutes or so. It's really easy. Then it'll do its auto levelling and you're ready to go. So that's how you go about levelling the bed. Now this Elibu bed obviously is like all of these beds. So all of the beds are going to be levelled in pretty much the same way. Now people can overthink this stuff and they say, okay, what about this, what about this, what about this? You've got to remember <laughs> these things are designed for a nine-year-old with sticky fingers to be prodding at it a bit and to get something out of it. So if you turn it on and you see the screen and there's something to prod at, prod at it and you'll find it'll do what you want it to do. It's not that difficult actually when you begin to use it. When you're sitting there and it's in your head and you're worrying about it, then you find it much more difficult than it actually is when you've got this screen in front of you and you're poking at it a little bit to see what it does. Because it's about exploring the machine as well and half the time that's just with you in front of it exploring it. We will look at other aspects of it but that's how to do the levelling. This really is stunningly easy to use, it's just a touchpad with a very simple four menu on it. Poke at it with your fingers you'll get something happening. But it's, uh, the hardest thing really with these things is to get going with them and they've done what they can to make it as easy as possible. Now one of these things that I like about this machine is that um, you can use it standalone, which is it's perfectly standalone at the moment. It's just doing its own thing. It's not plugged into a computer. It's a little card port there where you put your drawings in and it can read that card and tell you what drawings are on there and print them. So it can be perfectly standalone or you can link it up with the USB. And there's a USB port right there to link this to your computer. Now, I've used it both ways and actually I find it a little easier to use on the computer if I happen to be doing lots of stuff and it just saves me the trouble of carrying the SD card around which I can find a bit irritating if I'm doing a fair few prints. I quite like it just to be linked up just for that reason, none other. But it will work computer, it will work standalone, it will work by its card. So pretty awesome but anyway that's how you do the bed levelling. I hope that helped. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.